Hi, my name is Jenna Bostiger, and you're watching Cryptid Cryptids. On this episode, Sekhmet and the Sphinx. And when I first started this video, it was just going to be about Sekhmet, the lion-headed goddess of Egypt. But when I started researching lion-human hybrids, I found two of, imp of equal importance. One is the race of lion-headed humans, and the other is a species of human-headed lions, like the Sphinx. The Sphinx and other human-headed lions were common around the world thousands and thousands of years ago. You may think that the Sphinx in Egypt is the oldest one, but actually, there were also human-headed lion statues found near Gobekli Tepe, and those are said to be the oldest, and those are in Turkey. The lion cryptid is the oldest known statue ever found from a cave in Germany, and it's made of mammoth ivory and said to be 40,000 years old. And the Sphinx is a common species represented around the world from Mesopotamia, Babylon, Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Asia, Syria, Greece, and probably the most well-known one, the Sphinx in Egypt, which is the largest. Lion-headed men are also mentioned in the Bible. They come from Moab, which was a biblical place located in the Middle East. And according to the King James Version, they were lion-like men. That is, their human features still retained some resemblance to the lion. Lion men warriors of ancient Babylon possessed lion heads, men's bodies, and birds' feet, and identified with Nurgle, the god of the underworld. In Urmahulo of Sumeria, there was a legend of a ruthless race of lion-headed men. They were warriors that showed no mercy. There is another account in the Bible about fierce warriors who had the faces of lions in Chronicles 12.8. And just scattered throughout the Bible, they do mention a race of lion-headed men. Again, in Samuel, Benai slays two lion men of Moab. There's also this skull that is on display at the Museum of Anthropology at the University of Bologna in Germany. And supposedly it shows the, the effects of a disease known as Leonatasis osea. Or is this really evidence of a lion-human hybrid? There's a German word, Lohenmensch, which means lion person. And then remember that lion-headed figurine, which is the oldest known animal form sculpture in the world. And then the scriptures that speak of the lion men from Moab. They're also sometimes called aerials. When I turned 18, my mom moved to Cairo, Egypt. So when I was 18, I went to visit her in Egypt. And I went to the Khan and I bought some Egyptian souvenirs and some jewelry. And I was fond of the evil eye that sees all and protects you from evil and the ankh that represents eternal life. And I also bought a gold ring with the head of Sekhmet on it, even though I didn't know who Sekhmet was at the time. Later on, I would find out that Sekhmet is the Egyptian goddess of war and destruction, vengeance in the form of plagues and natural disasters. She's also the cure to the plagues and a healer. And she cares about the balance between man and nature and a balance between the environment. Sekhmet was associated with the goddesses given the title Eye of Ra, 
According to myth, Ra became angry because mankind was not following his laws as preserving mat, which means justice or balance. So he decided to punish them by sending an aspect of his daughter, the Eye of Ra. He plucked Hathor from Uraeus on his brow and sent her to earth in the form of a lion. And she became Sekhmet, the Eye of Ra, and began her rampage. So I think it's fair to say that Sekhmet had a bad temper because she was known as being a healer, a lover of justice and balance, and she gets upset when and she gets upset when the balance is thrown off. I learned about Sekhmet in not that long ago, like maybe in 2015. I remember it was around Halloween. And I was fascinated by what she represented. Sekhmet is one of the oldest known Egyptian deities. Her name is derived from the Egyptian word Sekhem, which means power or might, and often translated to the powerful one or she who is powerful. And she's depicted as a lion-headed woman, sometimes with the addition of a sun disk on her head. She was the patron of physicians and healers, and the priests of Sekhmet became known as skilled doctors. Sekhmet was mentioned a number of times in the spells of the Book of Dead as both a creative and destructive force. But above all, she is the protector of Mat, and Mat is balance or justice. She was also named the one who loves Mat, Mat and who detests evil. She was also known as the Lady of Pestilence and the Red Lady, indicating her alignment with the desert. And it was thought that she could send plagues against those who angered her. Sekhmet's attributes were absorbed into that of Mut, which sometimes took on the form of a lion. So Sekhmet is a very important lion-headed goddess from Egypt and one of the oldest and she cares about the environment and animal rights and when I first learned about Sekhmet it wasn't that long ago it was just in probably 2015 and I had a, at that time when I was learning about her I had just made up my mind that I was going to try to get involved with animal rights even though I I'm an animal empath, and so deciding to get involved with animal rights was a big major decision because at that time, I experienced, it was a very difficult time for me. So Sekhmet is an important goddess. And it's funny, I looked for the pictures, some more pictures of me from Egypt, and the only one that I could find is this one with me in front of a lion with a man's head, which is exactly what we're talking about a lion cryptid. I was 18. Well, thank you. For and this place in the middle of the jungle in Africa. I mean, just look at how old that must be. It looks so old. And then finally, this place called Ayandara it's in Syria and there, it's temple ruins and you can see all around it there are the lion the man-headed lion cryptids but and it's massive in scale built around that same time long ago probably maybe antediluvian and look what else was put in the stone at the time this was built giant footprints. I mean, how much more proof do you need really that this was built by giants? In a time when there were some strange creatures and cryptids that existed along with them. But I definitely want to do another video someday about all the giant footprints in stone around the world. And if you like this episode and want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Bye.